This afternoon's webcast will be about the Pegasus with LabScope and a PC scan with VCI. One housekeeping rule to start. If you look at the top of the Pegasus, this cable that is coming out is the cable that will go directly to the monitor that you're going to look at when I can see the live Pegasus data. So let's now turn it over to Todd for the description of the Subaru problem. Thanks, Steve. You might already be hearing the problem on the Subaru. Do you hear the fan going? Relays clicking? Check engine lights blinking? That's the way this vehicle came into us. Let's go to the Pegasus and see if we have any codes in the system. There are quite a few codes in the system. Let's check out code 1101. Let's look at code assist. And right there, first line of code assist. Disconnect the green test connectors. The green D check connectors on a Subaru set many codes, causes output cycling, and the check engine light to blink. But before we fix this problem, let's look at this other information on this vehicle within the Pegasus. Let's go to direct hit technician. Let's put in keyword P0500. That's the speed sensor code. I know that code's not real because the vehicle speedometer works. Here you'll see this exact vehicle, which is this exact engine package. The next vehicle set is this exact vehicle plus or minus two years. That gives you a larger vehicle set to check through. And then from there we go into this same vehicle with this same engine package, which would bring in the Forester and Impreza on a Subaru. From there we got this engine package plus or minus two years, again another larger vehicle set. And then we have all available engine packages, so that's this vehicle with all engine packages. That works really well for things that are not engine specific, like ABS or transmission. From there we have the largest vehicle set, which is all available engine packages plus or minus two years. My favorite vehicle set to use is this exact vehicle, plus or minus two years. The information we see here is hotline archives. We have 12 hotline archives regarding this, one posted fix, and two OBD code data. Let's go to hotline archives. Within hotline archives, the second one down has the largest set of codes. See this little bullseye over here? That's a confirmed fix. If you look a little far to the right there, you can see we have a confirmed fix to the green D check connectors, again, for this exact same vehicle, for these codes. Another reason we'd like to go plus or minus two years, you can see this archive is for a 97 Subaru Legacy Outback. This vehicle's a 98 Legacy Outback. Vehicles tend to be built in generations, so going plus or minus two years gives you a, a bigger vehicle set to choose from. Steve. Since you're such an old man, let me get the door for you. Let's fix this vehicle. Oh. <laughs> They're down by the accelerator pedal. Yeah, got it. Cycle the key off. Oh. Back on. Let's recheck for di diagnostic trouble codes. As you can see, all diagnostic trouble codes are cleared on this vehicle. Sometimes it's not what you know about the vehicle, what you don't know about the vehicle that can get you in trouble. Using the Pegasus scan tool in the Code Assist database, we're able to find this problem quickly and get it corrected. Next, we're going to Jim Newkirk, who's working on a Volkswagen. Well, thanks, Todd. I appreciate that. I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name's Jim Newkirk. I'm the senior European he tech here at uh, Identifix. And today we're going to talk a little bit about a problem on a Volkswagen. As you can see behind me, I've got a 2004 Volkswagen Golf. And uh, this car has led a little bit of a checkered history. It's got the newer engine style in it, the 2.0 liter BEV engine. And this car has had a history of drivability problems for quite a long time. It's been to a number of shops and nobody's been able to quite fix the car. As a matter of fact, right now sitting behind me is a brand new throttle body on this vehicle. We've got 
a brand new mass airflow sensor on this vehicle. We've had many parts installed on this vehicle and we're still getting a check engine light and a drivability problem. That's our customer complaint. That's not surprising considering the problems that have been occurring on this car. The reported problems that we've seen have been a misfire, we've had a lean running condition, we've had uh, poor startability, poor drivability, lack of power due to the throttle body problem. So all of these things together could of course exacerbate problems on other systems. Primarily I'm talking about the O2 sensors and the catalytic converter. Anytime we have problems that can cause a lean condition, a misfire condition or anything like that, we can introduce problems into the uh, O2 sensors and into the catalytic converter system. So that's the direction we're probably going to be going in, uh, on this car. Uh, Volkswagens are strange animals. I, I know a lot of you guys are not going to be real comfortable with them. I, I tell you what, I've been working on them for 34 years and sometimes I'm not comfortable on them. But realistically speaking, if you take a little bit of time, you lose a little bit of brain power up here, you're going to be able to diagnose these things readily. And with the power of the Pegasus tool and the information that we have on that tool, you're going to be able to approach these cars with confidence, get them fixed, get a little bit of money in your back pocket, and most importantly, get a satisfied customer going. So I'd like to call one of my colleagues in here. Hey, Steve, you want to join me over here? I know Hi. how much you love Volkswagens, so sure, I'm going to Jim. make a bold statement here to you. All right. Volkswagens, my personal favorite car, do not have problems, okay? No problems on a Volkswagen, gang. Volkswagens have, you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Features. And opportunities. You are absolutely right, sir. Features and opportunities. That's right. With the power of the Pegasus tool, the power of the information on the Pegasus tool, a little bit of common sense, you can diagnose these cars, you can get a little bit of money in your back pocket, you can get a satisfied customer and uh, feel pretty good about the situation. So let's go ahead and start to diagnose this thing. Steve, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to go ahead and hop into this thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to access the information available on Pegasus through our databases and see what kind of information we can find. Okay. We've got Steve in the car now, we've got the Pegasus hooked up, and we know we've got a P0420 code stored. So what I'm going to have Steve do is I'm going to have him use the Pegasus to go ahead and look up information on our stored code, our P0420. The idea here is we have the opportunity now, with the information stored directly on the Pegasus, to go in and find out the best procedures or best course of action here for the code that we're interested in. So once again, we're going to use the power of the tool to get us where we want to be. So what Steve's going to do is he's going to punch in the information and he's going to pull up a repair track or an actual case history of what we found with one of these cars before. Now, if you take a look at this repair track, it's going to talk about testing the catalytic converter in the conventional way. Now, obviously, we can test a catalytic converter for inlet versus outlet temperature. Okay, we could also do a conversion rate test by feeding propane into the catalytic converter and looking at the, at the conversion at the, at the rear of the catalytic converter. Now these are invasive tests. They're going to take time. They're going to take effort. We've got a tool that's going to allow us, once again, I said Volkswagen has features, so we want to utilize these features to shortcut our diagnostic process. And one of the features that Volkswagen has is the ability to go in and force readiness test not only the front O2 sensor, but the rear O2 sensor as well. We can take that an additional step and actually test and validate the catalytic converter function once the catalytic converter is, is up to operating temperature. So, we're going to utilize the power of the tool now to go in and test. Now, I'd like to take just a couple of moments here to talk about the O2 sensor on this vehicle. This vehicle utilizes what's called a broadband or a wideband O2 sensor for the front O2 sensor. That gives us the ability to look at air fuel mixtures on this vehicle from all the way down around 4 or 5 to 1, all the way up to around 23 or 24 to 1. Now, the beauty of that is that means that this vehicle is in constant control, both from cold start, through warm, through wide open throttle, through decel. We're constantly controlling the, uh, the mixture on this vehicle. Now, here's the situation. This type of sensor does not utilize a standard voltage output. This type of sensor actually utilizes an amperage signal. The reason being is we're actually utilizing the change in amperage to bring what's called a NERT cell back to stoichiometric ratio. Now that's a lot of information I'm giving you here, but suffice to say that this is a sophisticated little sensor. Because it's a sophisticated little sensor, it's an expensive little sensor. And the last thing we want to do is replace an expensive sensor or throw a part at a vehicle without knowing for sure that that particular part needs to be replaced. 